Golden Top Speed. My name is Christy, and today in our garage is the 2009 Dodge Challenger SRT Limited Edition. Exciting, right? This longtime muscle car was introduced to the market in 1970 as Dodge answer to the Mustang and Camaro. Offered in one trim, the Challenger had eight engines to choose from. Talk about variety. In 1978, eight years later, the second generation Challenger was born. It retained the frameless hardtop styling of the old Challenger with only two engines to choose from, a 1.6 liter or 2.6 liter four-cylinder engine, taking the Challenger a long way in performance from its namesake. Production of the second generation Challenger stopped in 1983. Now, 25 years later, Dodge brought back the Challenger with a faster and more aggressive appearance and performance. The third generation Challenger debuted on February 6, 2008, simultaneously at the Chicago Auto Show and Philadelphia International Auto Show. It is a two-door coupe which shares the common design elements with the first generation Challenger, but a bit longer and taller. The Challenger is offered in three trims, RT, SE, and SRTA. Lucky us, we're test driving the SRTA, which is more aggressive and loaded Challenger trim. And boy, did we have fun with it. The starting price for the Challenger SRT is $39,320. Our test vehicle has a price of $44,400 because it's a limited edition and has the optional SRT option group package number two, a six-speed manual transmission and a navigation system. Now, let's go outside with Miles and have some fun with it. Thanks, Christy. Now, retro cars. Ones like our 2008 Dodge Challenger SRT8 here. They really need two things to be successful. Number one, they have to look like the original, and well, that's not that hard. But the second thing is, they have to have the modern spirit of the original car. Now, that's a little more difficult than it sounds. For example, the Volkswagen Beetle, the car that really started this whole retro car craze. Well, the first thing Volkswagen did was, they slapped a couple of interesting angles on a golf platform, and they had a car that looked like a Beetle. Now you get to the spirit of the car though. That's where we're talking about what people remember about the original Beetle. They remember it being an economical car. They remember it being their first car. In fact, they remember probably having a lot of firsts in their Beetle. What they kind of forget is the anemic engine. They kind of forget that, well, there was no space inside the car and it had little things like, it felt like the heater was never connected to anything. Just the little parts that you get from a very cheap car. Volkswagen threw that out. Instead in the new Beetle, you got a lot of more things. You got more amenities. It just gave you that warm, fuzzy feeling, and the car became a success. On the other hand, though, there was Ford. Ford decided they'd come out with the Thunderbird, and they do a retro version of that. So they bought a body that looked just like the original. Then they made the car just like the original. The only problem is, the spirit of that car, people thought it was a Corvette fighter. And in reality, the original Thunderbird, well, it was more just like a luxury roadster. It had a soft ride, it had a big engine, but it didn't go that fast. So when they did that with the updated version, when they did that with their retro car, well, people started complaining that the engine wasn't powerful enough. The car rode too soft. And well, people started complaining and the car eventually faded away. They didn't understand the spirit of the original car. And this is why we get to here. With our Dodge Challenger, well, Dodge really understands who they are. Dodge, their cars, their muscle cars, it has the image they're the outlaws. They're not necessarily the bad guys, but they're always the outlaws. And you can tell, well, again, the original Charger, the coupe model, this big brother of the Challenger here, that car, well, it was the General Lee and the Dukes of Hazard, and it was the choice of the mobsters to go after Steve McQueen and Bullet. It was a baddie. The Challenger also has its own little reputation. One of the greatest car movies that ever was is one called Vanishing Point. Basically, the Challenger in that car outran everything from Colorado all the way to California. Well, almost everything. It missed the park bulldozer. But the point is, is that this is exactly what this car wants to be. It wants to be the outlaw. You can see it in everything we have here. The slab sides here means the car casts a long shadow. The rear end, it's hunched over. It's raised up a little bit more than it was in the original car to look that much better. Even in the front here. It's got a furrowed brow. It makes it look like it's meaner, like it's this big hunk lurking in the shadows. It's just ready to pounce on you. And that's what's great about this car. It's just big and aggressive and you really like the look of it. Now, the one thing that Dodge also understands is they got to put modern touches on that and they really came through in the car. And this is where we're going to get into the detail right now. Now, right here is the real heart of a problem of the original muscle cars. 
the skinny tires of the old are not going to cut it on the new cars here, and that's why we got a big 20-inch wheel. But more importantly, and something that definitely wasn't on the originals, is we've got four-wheel disc brakes with anti-lock, and even better, this is a Brembo brake package. That means this is a big car. We also got a lot of stopping power behind it. To qualify as a muscle car, you obviously have to have a big engine, and because we have a Dodge, we get a Hemi. It's a 6.1 liter Hemi, in fact, and this V8 puts out 425 horsepower and 420 foot-pounds of torque. Now those kind of numbers are good enough to pull strong in every gear we got. We'll get more into that in the test drive. All you need to know right now is that if a muscle car has guts, then this one's got a huge heart. We usually don't show you the rear-ended cars that much here, but this one's really special to show. First of all, we've got the single pane of glass here that was on the original Challenger, and, well, it looks really good in the retro car. It still fits well today. But the other thing here is the trunk. The Challenger rides on the same platform as the Charger, the 300C, and those are very large cars, so what we get is an unexpectedly large trunk, so you can fit a lot of golf clubs in here, or if you're going with that outlaw image still, you can fit a bunch of duffel bags full of cash. There's a lot to get to in the Challenger interior, so let's start with some of the more mundane bits. A lot of your everyday parts are going to come out of the Chrysler parts bin, but well, that's relatively expected. Things like our touchscreen nav system here, well, that's something that we found basically in most of the Chrysler products we've had before. We've liked it then because, well, quite frankly, it's big and blocky and everything responds to our touch, and so we're going to like it in this car. Same thing with the air conditioning controls. In fact, if you're at home in a Charger, you're going to find yourself very much at home in the Challenger. Now, one of the things that Dodges are usually not good for are the interior plastics. They're usually sort of kind of a dull color and, well, Dodge has, an, has a real good solution here, and that is they've used a faux carbon fiber. I say it's a real good solution because, at the very least, it's an improvement. Another thing that we really like, though, is the packaging here on the seats. It's the SRT package, and what it is, is it keeps us well planned in the seat, so anytime we're twisting around, it's not really affecting us that much, but even more important is, it's very good on a long trip. One thing that we don't like about the car is we don't get the three-spoke steering wheel. Dodge doesn't put in a three-spoke steering wheel, and well, it doesn't really make any functional difference, but this is supposed to be a muscle car. It's supposed to be a retro muscle car, and we don't have the three-spoke. That's definitely a miss. One thing that they hit on the target, though, is the gear shift cover. Right here, it's the pistol grip. It's retro. It's cool. It's just really fun to hang on to. And quite frankly, it's made me shift a few times when I probably shouldn't have, and I probably shifted a little harder just because it's that much more fun to grip. But the one thing that we're really missing in the car is the atmosphere. That's the one thing that's more, that's more about this car than anything else. Because we have the high door line and the low roof line, there's very little glass in this car, and it's actually physically dark. Now what that does is it goes back to that whole outlaw personality we were talking about before. This car, well, it almost changes you a little bit more sinister and, well, it feels almost like you're not driving to work as much as you're hiding out in between bank jobs. Thank you, Mouse. Well, it's only half of our test drive with the Dodge Challenger SRT8 Limited Edition. Part two of our test drive with the Challenger is soon to come, so stay tuned. Seventies muscle car, pure muscle.